This is my 1997 Dodge Viper GTS. I've always wondered how much horsepower it makes, so I took it to a dyno, a dynamometer, a machine that measures horsepower, in order to find out. Here's what happened. First, you might be wondering exactly why I wanted to measure horsepower. Doesn't the manufacturer provide those figures? Well, yes, but this car came out of 1990s Chrysler, and they weren't always the best with accuracy, which is a diplomatic way of saying that I'm really lucky this car left the factory with two doors painted the same color. For that reason, I always thought the horsepower of this car could go two ways. One is Dodge was openly wrong about the horsepower, and the car makes way less than they said, or it was built so poorly that tons of horsepower have escaped over the 20 years. Or maybe they were wrong in the other direction, it works out in my favor and the car actually makes a lot more power than they said. Or maybe it was the same, I don't know, who knows, but we're about to find out. The results are coming, but if you want to find out more, click the link below to go to autotrader.com slash oversteer where you can see all of the dyno charts and graphs for my run. You can also hear more about my Viper dyno experience in my column about it. Additionally, on Oversteer, I've compiled a list of the cheapest Vipers currently listed for sale on Autotrader across the country, which is rather interesting. But back to the dyno, I was contacted by my new friends Matt and Chip of Matt Hill Motorsports in southern New Jersey, and they suggested I come on down and stick the car on their dyno and see how much horsepower it made. So I did. I got there, they carefully backed it on to the dyno, into the dyno cell, and then it was time to let it rip. Except I was kind of freaked out. Have you ever done this before? Here's what happens. You get in there and you stick the car on the rollers and you start moving, except you aren't moving, just the wheels are. So you're driving along like normal, but you're not going anywhere. And then you get going really fast in a high gear, in fourth gear in this case. I got well over 100 miles an hour, except I was just sitting there and it's so loud and it's just, the garage is right in front of you. You're not going anywhere and it's really kind of unnerving and scary. Here's how the first run went. Here we go. I did four dyno runs, but I'm not going to make you sit through them all, but just in case you want to sit through another one, here you go. All right, whoa, gonna go again here. All right, here we go, last one. Obviously, you're wondering just how much horsepower did this car make on the dyno? Well, here's the deal. Dodge said back in 1997 that this thing made 450 horsepower and 490 pound-feet of torque, but they measure power and torque at the engine brake. The maximum power output of the engine makes for better advertising. A dyno measures horsepower at the wheels, and there is some loss between the engine and the wheels. Most car enthusiasts figure this loss of power is somewhere around 15% for a rear-wheel drive car. 
So with that in mind, my Viper needed to hit 382.5 wheel horsepower to reach Dodge's target of 450 brake horsepower. My actual best was 398.3 wheel horsepower, which translates to just under 470 brake horsepower. Not bad. As for torque, Dodge said 490 pound-feet, which means I need to hit 416.5 pound-feet at the wheels in order to hit Dodge's number. My actual number? 437.4 pound-feet at the wheels, which translates to 515 pound-feet of torque. Really not bad. So my Viper is 20 horsepower more powerful and 25 pound-feet torquier than Dodge said it was when it came out of the factory, even though that was 20 years and 43,000 miles ago. That is pretty impressive. Of course, as I did more runs, those numbers started to drop a little bit. The engine is always a little bit less powerful and less torquey as it starts to heat up. But even after four runs, all of my figures were still above those provided from Dodge back in 1997. And so, ladies and gentlemen, I think we can draw a conclusion here. When I bought this car, you all told me it was incredibly dangerous and I had to be very careful with it. Well, it turns out I have to be just a little more careful than we all expected.